Hey there, it's Jake from Texla, and today we're going to be going over how to verify a toll-free number with Twilio. So first off, the most important thing is to just verify that you do indeed have a toll-free number and that you're in the right place. So if you go over here to phone numbers, manage, and active numbers, if your number begins with 800 888 877 866 855 844 and 833, that is going to be a toll-free number, and it'll say right here. If it's something other than that, it's going to be most likely a local number. So there's actually a separate verification that you need to complete for local numbers. I'm going to leave the link to that in the description right below this video. It's going to be called A2P 10 DLC registration. So go ahead and do that if you're on a local number. Once we've verified that we do indeed have a toll-free number and that we're in the correct place, the first thing we're going to want to do is right over here next to messaging where it says toll-free verification required. Feel free to just click on that. And it's going to open up this pop-up. So once the pop-up opens, you can take a look. It says step one of two business and contact information. Now you may be looking at this and saying, well, my screen looks different. I see step one of three. Um, no worries there. Just fill out that information. Um, there's just a couple things that are filled out on some accounts that aren't on others. You're totally fine there. Um, the main thing that you need to be aware of is for this legal entity name, be sure to write down the name that is displayed on your taxes. Uh, this is extremely important. It has to match up with your kind of tax information there. Um, but if it's showing step one of three, super simple stuff. It's just like your first name and your phone number and all that good stuff. So fill that out. And if you are seeing the same screen as me, feel free to just fill this page out. Now for website URL, if you do not have a website, you are able to fill in either a Facebook account or a LinkedIn account for your business uh, if those exist. So if you don't have a website that's public and available, just throw in a link to your company's Facebook account or your company's LinkedIn account. Next, we're going to click continue to messaging service. And this is something that both folks will see, everyone that was showing step one of two and everyone that was showing step one of three. This page is going to be the same for everybody. So the first step is selecting your estimated monthly volume. That's just how many texts you think you're going to send per month. Next up is opt-in type. So let's go through these real quick. First, we have verbal. Next, we have a web form. Then we have a paper form. Then we have via text. And lastly, we have mobile slash QR code. So the three that we're going to really be focusing on here is web form, paper form, and via text. These are the most common and also the most accepted kind of opt-in practices. Uh, I'd recommend against verbal. An example of this would be someone comes into your store and you ask them verbally if they consent to receive, you know, marketing SMS and promotional SMS from you guys. Um, and then you enter them into your kind of system once they verbally say yes. Um, this is something that kind of has a difficult time getting approved because there's no real way to prove that you're gathering that verbal consent every time. So I'd recommend against using verbal. Uh, web form, this one's super great. Um, I'll be showing images of examples here shortly. Um, next up is paper form. This could be something like a waiver or a receipt uh, where they have a signature and they also agree to receive, you know, marketing or promotional SMS from you. Uh, lastly, we have via text. So this is something like a keyword opt-in. If uh, someone texts your number yes to opt-in to receive text messages from you, uh, that would be via text. So happy to show what these look like here real quick go over to this. Uh, this is just an example of, you know, a written form. By signing this document, I consent to receive marketing and promotional SMS from the company at this number. Uh, and then there's some extra copy there that I will include. Um, and then they sign it. So this is a compliant way to kind of collect that opt-in via a paper form. Next up, this is something uh, text yes to this number to receive, you know, event reminders. This is an example of the via text uh, option that was given to you there. And lastly, we have a web form, which we'll show here just in a second. So what we're going to actually use is a web form. That's usually the most common if you have it on your website um, or have it emailed out to folks to kind of fill out this is a great way to collect that opt-in consent. Next up, there's use case categories. We have a ton here. You can select as many as you'd like. So whatever uh, kind of use cases you think you're gonna be using the number for, be sure to kind of check all of those. 
Next up is opt-in workflow image URLs. This can be kind of confusing for some folks. This is not a link to, let's say, your web form. Most folks would just put in a link to their web form and submit it. That's not what this is. So this actually has to be a hosted image of whatever your opt-in type is. So what we can do here is we can go to a site like imagebb.com. This is what I typically use, but you can use Imager or AWS hosting, really anything that works for you. That's just an image hoster. We're going to click start uploading, select the file, and it's going to upload. So once it's uploaded, we get a little viewer link here. So we're just going to copy this and paste it back into the bar to take a look. So this is an example of a web form. You've got name, phone number, and then also a little checkbox agreeing that they want to receive marketing and promotional SMS from this number. So we're gonna take this viewer link and we're gonna paste it in the opt-in workflow image URLs. So if you have, um, if you have multiple, include as many as possible because that'll help escalate the kind of review process but um, you only need one. So if there's only one place that you're collecting that opt-in info, no worries. Um, one thing that is super important is that you have copies similar to this. So it can't just say, I agree to receive marketing materials. It has to be very specific about SMS and also adding this little reply stop to opt out, help for help goes a long way as well, just in the ease of getting that uh, number verified. So be sure that whatever you're submitting is compliant and kind of fits into this copy. I'll be sure to leave that in the description below. So once we have the opt-in workflow image URL or URLs pasted, uh, we have the use case description. So this is going to be a brief kind of description of what you're planning on sending those texts for. So you can see that my use case description here was we are sending marketing and promotional materials to opted in customers on holidays and special occasions. So this part is actually very important. The two opted in customers, it's always great to just include this to further emphasize the fact that yes, the folks that you are texting are opted in and you are compliant. So whatever your use case description is, if you just add this little message to opted in customers or opted in clients, if you add that to the end of whatever you wrote for the use case description, that will go a long way. Next up, we have message content. So this is going to be an example of one of the messages that you're going to send. So you can see for our message content, I wrote, hey, first name, happy Labor Day, enjoy 20% off all annual subscriptions with code TEXLA at checkout, reply stop to opt out. So you can, all of this can just be particular to you and your use case and what you think you're going to send. But right here, I just recommend further adding this to the end of your message content with the reply stop to opt out, um, just as similar to the opted in customers over on the use case description. It just really further emphasizes that you understand compliance um, and that you are looking to be as compliant as possible. So adding that uh, at the end will go a long way as well. Next, we have email for notifications. This is the email that they'll reach out to once the toll-free verification has been approved. So just your, uh, your email that's tied to the account should suffice there. If you have any additional information, feel free to leave it in this box, but that's not necessary. We're going to agree to the terms of service, and we're going to send the information for verification and confirm the send. And we'll go here, and it says toll-free verification in progress. So just keep coming back to this page every once in a while. Uh, at the current time of recording this, toll-free verification has taken about two to three weeks. Um, I know Twilio is working very, very hard to bring that number down significantly. So uh, for the meantime, just check. Uh, I recommend checking once a day, uh, every morning, just making sure that this is still in the in progress because you will not be able to send from this number while the verification is in progress. You're still going to need to wait for that to be fully approved. So like I said, at the time of recording this, um, it's about two to three weeks. For the most up-to-date timing, I'd recommend reaching out to Twilio Support down here in the Support Center because they're really the experts there. They'll know exact timelines. Um, you can also reach out to me at jake at texla.com. Happy to answer uh, any questions there if I know them off the top of my head. But that should wrap it up for the toll-free verification. The only step left is just to wait for this verification to be completed and you'll be all set to go.